I've been in the town of Lone Pine for the past couple days. Um, went out there to meet up with a real long time client of mine. Uh, kind of show them the sights. I uh, went up to the uh, Bristlecone Pine Trees yesterday to Patriarch Grove, and that was pretty freaking awesome. I haven't been there in a real long time. It was absolutely gorgeous. Um, I managed to expose a few frames of 400TX with my Mamiya C220, um, playing with the details there on that beautiful wood, but uh, didn't get a ton of shots because I was mainly there to help him, and I don't know if any of them are really earth shattering, but uh, makes just to see those. But last night I stayed in a Best Western Motel in Lone Pine, which was uh, nicer than I thought it'd be. It's pretty good. Um, but I woke up at 4 a.m. with like this crippling pain in my left leg, like almost from my hip all the way down to my ankle. And uh, I couldn't fall back asleep. It hurt so freaking bad. I have no idea what that's about. I hope it's not serious. Uh, I think it was probably just from being in the driver's seat for six hours yesterday. Um, it's kind of coming and going, uh, the pain. But I've come out here to this, uh, these trains um, to camp tonight, take some pictures. And uh, I don't know, maybe limping a little bit today. But eh, at least that'll look cool with my hat. You know how there's train people and then there's just everybody else? Like you're either obsessed with trains or you kind of don't really care about them. I feel like if I grew up in, I don't know, Wisconsin or something, I would have been a full blown train guy because I was probably just like a basement and a couple of bad winters away from having a full blown model train diorama, you know, with the fake mountain ranges and people sprinkled in and all that kind of stuff. Something about it, man. So I hope I can get some good shots of them today. I brought a ton of formats and a ton of film. So I think my biggest challenge is gonna be narrowing down all that stuff to uh, just a few tools. So uh, a few minutes ago, a, tr a rail worker just came by in his truck and I think undid some, a couple of the um, connections on these two, uh, these two rail cars. And uh, now I can definitely hear uh, an engine down there. I can actually see the heat coming off of, its, uh, off of its stack. So I think they're coming to move away a bunch of these, which is fine, because there's plenty to work with. I got plenty of, plenty of train cars, but this will be interesting to see. That's gonna be a lot of train cars pulling away. Yeah, here it comes. I was on that side. Oh man, there's nothing like the rumble of a freight train. There's something soothing about it. So that's on another track. I guess they're not taking away cars, but something's going on. I wish I had gotten that on video, but apparently the engine just backed up to this rail of cars next to me because it just went shoo. You could hear them all hitting into each other. That was cool. I bet these are going to get pulled away in a sec. That was exciting. See? Train dork. All right, let's get back down to business here. So I apparently have quite a bee in my bonnet for uh, shooting some black and white instant film because I brought a total of three different black and white instant formats. Um, I got my 
good old mint slr 670s which is basically an sx70 um, that's been modified and upgraded and i got some black and white polaroid for that i also brought this uh, polaroid 103 which i actually haven't used this camera in God, i don't know three years four years five years it's got a pack of Fuji FP3000B in it with one frame left. And uh, I get the feeling it's not really gonna turn out that well. You know, it's long expired. It hasn't been refrigerated because it's just been in the camera. So uh, I don't have real high hopes for this, but I wanna give it a try because um, I've been looking into a Super Sense one instant film because, you know, I like to torture myself with $15 exposures. But uh, they recently got their film back in stock and I kind of want to see if I like the process of using this camera and um, you know how the film looks and all that. And then finally, I of course have some new 55, 4x5. And I um, only brought three exposures because I don't want to have to file for bankruptcy because of this trip. And uh, I'm probably only going to use two of them. And in fact, uh, last night as I was trying to fall asleep, uh, an idea hit me a composition I wanted to do on new 55 a diptych so two frames side by side um, with these trains here and in fact I liked the idea so much I did a little sketch of it I know shut up this is why I'm a uh, photographer not a painter but um, It'll look much better when it's done. Uh, but I kind of want the two uh, new 55 frames side by side uh, with trains going off on each direction. I would like it to be a dark train on one of them and a light train on another, um, but we'll see how it actually pans out. And uh, I may kind of start with uh, shooting the, the regular Polaroids because uh, I think that'll get me warmed up and get some detail shots and kind of get a feel for uh, black and white on these scenes. had such a love-hate relationship with Polaroid film lately. I shot a pack of iType 600 film and they just all came out terrible. Blue flames, uh, terrible exposure, all that good stuff. So I thought maybe, ah, it's the 600 film. The uh, SX70 film will be better. So then I shot some SX70 film and um, equally terrible, just in different ways. Uneven development, all that kind of stuff. That might've been because the film was probably expired. But uh, yeah. I don't have super high hopes about these shots, but I do really want to shoot them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do it and hope Polaroid comes through. It sounded like a gunshot. Pew! All right, Polaroid came through. These are looking really good. Seems like they improved their chemistry or something because these are about the most evenly developed, richest contrast Polaroids I think I've shot in a long time. That's good. So um, I'm gonna drive around to the other side of these trains because the sun it's now on that side of it, and uh, I'm going to want to be there for the rest of the day. So, uh, let's head on over.
late last night in Lone Pine. Um, had to get dinner after we were up at the Patriot Grove through Sunset. And I saw this uh, trailer just off the side of the highway. And just a white trailer said barbecue with no one out front. And I said, barbecue sounds really good. But at this place, I'm either going to get an intestinal worm or I'm going to have the best barbecue I've ever had. I'm happy to say it's the former. Wait, no, the latter. Turns out the guys from Texas. They know how to do some pulled pork. And take a little breaky poo from the monochrome stuff and uh, shoot some Portrait 160 on 6x17. I think they're taking away my trains though. Found a composition I like and it sounds like they're starting up. Might have to find something else if they take them away. Now oh, that sucks. Had a shot I liked over there. Well, it took all my train cars away. That really blows. I guess I'll head over to where they moved the white train cars. Because that's at the end of a track. I think they're staying there for a while. Hopefully we can make something work over there. Busy day at the train yard. Another episode of Chasing Trains with old Nikki C. You know, I was kind of excited about taking pictures of trains, but I wasn't like over the moon about it. And the amount of effort this is taking now is making the ROI feel not worth it. Yeah. I think they're finally done moving trains at least. I saw the engines drive off a little bit ago. All right. I'm going to try and snap myself out of this bad mood I'm in by shooting this final frame of Fuji FP3000B because I think that might make me happy. Although it's a risky proposition because I get the distinct feeling this shot is just gonna piss me off more. Let's take a look. All right, let's see if I even remember how to do this. Let's see, pull the, pull the tab, and I think the directions are on the film. Let's see what it says. Okay, probably 10 more seconds. Ugh. Cool. Oh my god. I've got to salvage this trip. In case you were wondering, yes, I did forget to check the battery ahead of time. But I checked it when I got home and it was still good and the shutter was firing, so that wasn't the issue. Now I just needed some hot 6x17 action to lift my spirits. So I started scouting compositions on this beautifully rusted car. And up until recently, I've been using an app called Mark II Artist Viewfinder to help me rough in my compositions and figure out lens selection. But I just switched to a much more affordable app called Viewfinder Preview. 
It's a similar tool, but I much prefer the interface and functions on this one. And it even has film emulation modes. This definitely isn't a composition I was planning on taking. In fact, uh, kind of a weird composition. But it's the only one that excited me. So we're going to shoot it. It's really ultimately about the landscape behind the train. But I like having the train in the foreground. I think it's kind of a cool detail, abstracty, slightly shot. So the tricky thing about this composition is I want the rail to look like it's perfectly level across the scene. But it's not level. It's tilting this way. So it's going downhill, but just uh, ever so slightly. And so the only way I can make it look level in the scene is to make my camera unlevel matching the rail. So that's what I'm going to do. So this will technically be an unlevel shot, but it's going to look level in the final photo. So i got to get it lined up first. And then I'm just going to... It doesn't need much, but I'm just going to tweak so that the rail is level. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, I'm actually kind of excited about this. All right, I think we're framed up. So I had to do um, some lens rise and also some shift. And I had to get my positioning just right so that the mountain in the back or the hill in the back was not blocked by anything on the train. I didn't want blocking it. Um, so that put me off center a little bit. So then I just used shift to get me back centered where I wanted to be on my composition. Um, so yeah, it's just time to focus, meter, take the shot. I used a technique to check if lens tilt would actually help me get the depth of field I wanted over leaving the standards vertical, but found out that it wasn't going to help. So I just left the standards vertical and opted for a real narrow aperture to cover this deep expanse. Okay, 45 at one eighth of a second. This composition jumped out at me immediately when I walked up to the base of the train car. I was looking to take a photo that wasn't just a photo of a train, if that makes sense. Uh, I wanted something that incorporated the trains and definitely had that desert feel I like to capture, but wouldn't just look like a nifty snapshot of some nifty trains I found on my weekend road trip. This felt like a more thought out and unique take on it. If you've seen my previous videos, you may remember a shot I took of a junkyard in Santa Ana, California that incorporated some obvious parallel lines running across the image. I didn't make this connection consciously at the time, but I can see a similar theme with this photo. And this whole getting my position just perfect so the background slips right under the bottom of the train car thing is something else I've done before. I shot this bent train car on 4x5 film for one of the lessons on my large format course. And I had to do the same thing to make sure the horizon underneath was placed just how I wanted. Unintentionally overlapping subjects and intersecting lines drive me nuts. And I like that a view camera gives me more tools to affect these things. By the way, I took this shot with my Nikkor 150mm lens, but I also tried it with my Rodenstock 115mm. This obviously gives a wider view and thusly includes the wheels. I think I prefer the 150mm version better. But then again, I think I prefer the other one. No. Wait. Ah, you know how I am. Alright, so I've moved on to 4x5. Because I'm going to do a uh, new 55. Peel apart. And I think I might be tweaking my original pre-visualization just a bit. But we'll see how I feel after this one. Uh, I'm doing a shot looking down the line of the trains. If there's ever a scenario where swing will come in handy, it's this. Using my 210 millimeter. Okay, I think we're ready. 
16 at 1 60th. Now the trick to new 55 film is to set your expectations low. And you'll be okay if the picture doesn't turn out. Don't get me wrong, I love new 55, but it is a finicky film. Not forgiving at all. Okay, we're cocked. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, make sure I didn't forget anything. Closed. Make sure everything dialed in. Yeah, I think we're good. Now, I am not going to develop this out here in the field. I'm going to wait till I get back to my home office. So, you and I will both get to wait on the edge of our seats. I decided ultimately to not carry out my full diptych plan. I did toy with exposing one more sheet of New 55 on a detail composition of the train wheels, but in all honesty, I was a little short on enthusiasm by this point, for a multitude of reasons. I wasn't feeling really any inspiration to take more train photos, so I just decided to pack it in. Reflecting on it now, it's clear that I was only suffering from exhaustion and a touch of homesickness, because just looking at this video footage now, man, I'd love to go get one or two more compositions in this gorgeous dusk light. Bottom line is, I let my reptilian brain talk me into seeking comfort above taking more photos. It just wasn't interested in my precious art. For some reason, that primal side of my brain is really good at taking the steering wheel from me when I'm alone in the desert and dusk starts to set in. I hate that it has that power over me. So here's the situation. Um, it's gorgeous out right now. The light is just beautiful at dusk like this, but I'm all trained out. I guess uh, I'm not such a uh, trained dork after all, because just a few photos has me well satiated. Um, but I really don't want to waste this trip. So what I've decided to do is um, check one of the locations off my previously Taco Bell ongoing project. Um, I have this big old spreadsheet of all the previously Taco Bells that I want to photograph. And I checked it real quick, and turns out there's a location um, in the high desert here. It's about, I think, an hour, 15-minute drive away, but it would normally, normally take me like two hours to get there. So um, this will make it a little easier to pursue. It's, uh, it's a Mexican restaurant, as is the case for a lot of these. Um, but this one is open 24 hours, which is great, because that means I can shoot it at dawn. It'll have some life in it. And according to the pictures on uh, Google Maps, it's got some killer neon signage. So I think this may actually be a really good um, good location to shoot at dawn. And uh, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to camp here and then hit the road real early tomorrow morning and go photograph uh, this previously Taco Bell. Yeah, I think this is a good plan. No, it isn't. So basically everything kind of went to shit after this. Uh, I got greedy and decided I wanted to camp a lot closer to the previously Taco Bell so that I wouldn't have to wake up so damn early the next morning. So I went on Google Earth on my phone and thought I found the perfect campsite about 45 minutes closer to my destination. So I set off to go find it. And when I got there, I realized that it was completely inaccessible. I couldn't get to it at all. So I just kept driving and looking and driving and looking for a campsite. And uh, it was completely dark by this time. And I was getting closer and closer to civilization. And I decided, you know what, if I camp out here this close to a town, I have a pretty high likelihood of getting stabbed by a meth head in the middle of the night. Also, my uh, leg pain was coming back. Hasn't come back since, by the way. Seems it was just a symptom of driving too long. So between my leg, the fear of meth heads, and uh, not being able to find a suitable campsite, I just decided to go home. So I didn't end up camping that night. I regretted it pretty heavily the next day. I should have stayed out there. But, um, you know, that's the way things go. I did end up uh, scouting that previously Taco Bell before I went home. So uh, sure enough, got great neon signage 
and um, I plan on going back and photographing that in the near future. But uh, now there's only one thing left to do. I got a sheet of new 55 to develop. And um, who knows how this is going to go. But let's uh, get this one sheet developed. Maybe I'll get one final good shot from the trip. All right, three minutes. Two and a half now. So how you been? All right. Hey, print looks great. That's cool. Yeah, let's get this goo out of here. Yeah, buddy. Few things are more satisfying than when the print turns out really well on new 55. But the negative is always even better, so I can't wait to see the finished negative. Indeed, the print came out pretty cool. Actually, as far as peel apart prints in 2022 go, it's perfect. And because the print is directly dependent on the quality of the negative, it's no surprise, I'm happy with the negative too. It can be challenging getting good results on both the print and the negative when it comes to new 55. They don't have different ISO ratings like the old Polaroid peel apart did, but it does require a delicate balance be struck on the densities for each. If the negative is just a little bit too thin or a little bit too dense, the print suffers. In other words, you have to effing nail your metering. And speaking of nailing it, remember that sweet sketch I did? Yep. Nailed it. Half of it, anyway. But now I'm depressed that I didn't make an effort to get the first half of my diptych. Probably would have been really cool. Oh well. I'll finish it off someday. Hey, maybe I'll attempt it when I go back out there to shoot that previously Taco Bell. Now, wouldn't that be neat? Well, there you have it. Overall, I would say this was a mildly successful trip. I mainly wish I had kept more of a level head throughout the challenges I faced, but hey, there's always next time. And on that note, I want to thank you for coming along with me on this little journey. I do hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. If you got something beneficial out of this video and want to buy me a beer to say thanks, check the link in the description.